Welcome to CNU, the video series that will teach you everything you need to know to provide excellent nutrition care. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do macronutrient calculations for central parenteral nutrition. By the end of the video, you should be able to follow a 7-step algorithm to calculate macronutrients for parenteral nutrition and understand some best practices for writing a safe and effective prescription. If you find this information useful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. We begin by looking at the seven step algorithm that I just mentioned. The first step is to determine the fluid and energy requirements. Then you calculate the amount of protein and carbohydrate needed in grams and calculate the calories provided by those nutrients. Once you know the calories provided by protein and carbohydrate, you can calculate the amount of fat needed. Following that, you determine which stock solutions and fat emulsion will be used, and with this information, you will be able to calculate the volume of each macronutrient. Finally, you calculate the minimum total volume for the order. Only when you have completed all of these steps will you be ready to write a prescription. In order to show you how this works, I'm going to walk you through a case study. Marcus is a 43-year-old male with a past medical history of Crohn's disease, who developed severe abdominal pain and bloating while he was at work. He was brought to the emergency room the following day, where he was found to have a small bowel obstruction due to scar tissue from a previous surgery. Marcus was initially treated with IV fluids and nasogastric decompression in an attempt to avoid surgery. However, this was ultimately unsuccessful. On hospital day number three, he underwent a small bowel resection to resolve the issue. The day after surgery, his diet was advanced to clear liquids, but he vomited shortly after drinking them. Imaging revealed a post-operative ileus, and he was made NPO. You are the registered dietitian, and you have been consulted to provide guidance with parenteral nutrition. At this stage, Marcus has been without adequate nutrition for seven days, does not have a functional gastrointestinal tract, and it is unclear when the ileus will be resolved. After discussing the case with his surgeon, you decide to have a PICC line placed for central parenteral nutrition until adequate oral intake is achieved. A review of the medical chart reveals a body weight of 68 kilograms and a BMI of 20.6. The first step to creating the order is to determine the fluid and energy requirements. The patient's only condition is Crohn's disease, so there is no need to restrict fluid. In addition to this, his energy needs can be considered to be slightly elevated due to his recent surgery, but we still want to be careful not to overfeed and increase risk for complications. Using a simple weight-based calculation, we estimate his fluid and energy needs at 35 milliliters per kilogram per day and 30 calories per kilogram per day, respectively. To get fluid, we multiply 35 by 68 to get 2,380 milliliters, and to get energy, we multiply 30 by 68 to get 2,040 calories. The second step is to calculate the amount of protein and carbohydrate needed in grams. Because Marcus is in the post-operative period of a significant surgery, I feel comfortable providing 1.5 grams per kilogram per day. To get the number of grams, we multiply 1.5 by 68 to get 102. With carbohydrate, it is important to keep in mind that there is a maximum amount that the liver can metabolize at once. That value is somewhere around 5 milligrams per kilogram per minute. When you go above it, you significantly increase the risk for complications like hyperglycemia and liver dysfunction. 
So you definitely want to do what you can to stay below it. In my professional experience, I have found a safe place to start is right around three. From here, we can calculate how many grams to give each day. We multiply the glucose infusion rate of three by 68 kilograms. Then we multiply that result by the number of minutes in a day, which is 1400. This leaves us with 293,760 milligrams per day. Since there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram, we divide this number by 1,000 and end up with approximately 294 grams per day. The third step is to calculate how many calories this provides, which is not only important to ensure we satisfy the estimated energy demand, but also because it will help us figure out what is needed for fat. Protein provides the standard four calories per gram that we get from food. So 102 grams provides 408 calories per day. Carbohydrate, however, is a little bit different from the four calories per gram we're used to when calculating the calories in food. Solutions used for parenteral nutrition are made with a hydrated form of dextrose, and it only provides 3.4 calories per gram. We multiply 294 grams by 3.4 calories per gram, and the result is right around 1,000 calories per day. At this stage, we have the total calories, calories from protein, and calories from carbohydrate. To complete the fourth step, calculate the amount of fat needed, we just need to subtract the protein calories and the carbohydrate calories from the total calories. 2040 minus 408 minus 1000 equals 632 calories from fat. Similar to the carbohydrate component of parenteral nutrition, the fat component does not provide the standard 9 calories per gram that we find in food. Fat is infused as an intravenous fat emulsion, or IVFE, and emulsifying agents like glycerin and egg phospholipids actually increase the energy load so it is more like 10 calories per gram. If you want to get grams from calories, you can divide the calories from fat by 10 to get 63.2. Because we now have all three macronutrients, we can quickly check the macronutrient distribution to make sure it is appropriate. You do this by dividing the individual calories from each macronutrient by the total calories and multiplying that result by 100. Protein comes out to 20% of total calories, carbohydrate is 49% of total calories, and fat is 31% of total calories. All of these are within an acceptable range, with fat being the only one that may be considered on the high end. Should you feel the need to make an adjustment, this would be a good time to go back and do so. For instance, if you wanted to bring fat below 30% of total calories, you could slightly increase grams of protein or carbohydrate and it would not be too much extra work. In this example, we're going to keep the macronutrients as they are. The fifth step requires you to determine which stock solutions and fat emulsion will be used for each macronutrient. If you are doing calculations for an exam or homework, there is a decent chance concentrations will be given to you. Or, if you are ordering parenteral nutrition at a medical institution, it is possible you will not have the freedom to choose. The reason I will be listing some possibilities is to 1. Raise awareness that there are options available, and 2. Highlight that the stock concentration is essential to calculating the volume. Protein comes in the form of an amino acid solution. These solutions are found in concentrations ranging from 3.5% to 20%, with the most common being 
10% and 15%. As previously mentioned, carbohydrate comes in the form of a dextrose solution. These solutions are found in concentrations ranging from 2.5% to 70%, with the most common being 50% and 70%. I have also already mentioned that fat is delivered as an intravenous fat emulsion. These come in concentrations of 10%, 20%, and 30%. One useful piece of information about fat emulsions is that it's easy to determine calories provided or volume needed just from the concentration. This is because a 30% emulsion contains 3 calories per milliliter, a 20% emulsion contains 2 calories per milliliter, and a 10% emulsion contains 1.1 calories per milliliter. You will see how this comes in handy in the next step. Today we're going to move forward with a 10% amino acid solution, a 70% dextrose solution, and a 20% fat emulsion. Now that we know each concentration, we can complete the sixth step and calculate the volume of each macronutrient. A 10% amino acid solution contains 10 grams of protein for every 100 milliliter of solution. Since we want 102 grams per day, we can figure out how many milliliters that is by doing cross multiplication and division. The result is 1,020 milliliters. Similarly, a 70% dextrose solution has 70 grams of dextrose for every 100 milliliter of solution. Since we want 294 grams per day, we can set up cross multiplication and division again. The result this time is 420 milliliters. In the previous step, I showed you how a 20% lipid emulsion contains 2 calories per milliliter. That information is useful because if we intend to give 632 calories, we can just divide 632 by 2 to get 316 milliliters. Before we write a prescription, we'll want to complete step 7, calculate the minimum total volume. To do this, we have to add together the volume from each macronutrient, which is 1,756 milliliters. Then, we'll need to take additives into consideration. This includes the electrolytes, vitamins, and trace minerals that will be mixed in. Additives in parenteral nutrition provide somewhere between 100 to 200 milliliters per day. Because we will not be doing anything else with micronutrients in this lesson, I'm just going to say our order has 150 milliliters of additives. We add 150 to the volume of 1,756 to get 1,906, and this gives us the minimum total volume for the order we have created. It is the lowest volume we can use to fit the ingredients. To account for the difference between the estimated fluid need and the minimum total volume, 474 milliliters of sterile water can be added to the order when it is produced. This way, the patient shouldn't need any additional IV fluids. Finally, we are ready to write a prescription. Important items to document are the dosing weight, the site of infusion, whether it is peripheral or central, the total volume, and the infusion rate, which is the total volume divided by 24 hours when it is continuous. Then we'll want to list our contents, and here is what we recommend. As a best practice, macronutrients should always be written in grams per day. This is to avoid confusion or error in the case the stock solutions or fat emulsion change. 420 milliliters of a 50% dextrose solution provides a much different energy load than 420 milliliters of a 70% solution, but 294 grams per day is always 294 grams per day. 
Here is a summary for this lesson. When it comes to calculating macronutrients for central parenteral nutrition, you can follow a seven-step algorithm. First, you determine the fluid and energy requirements. Then, you calculate the amount of protein and carbohydrate needed in grams, and calculate the amount of calories provided by those nutrients. Once you have the amount of calories provided, you can calculate the amount of fat needed. You will then want to determine which stock solutions and fat emulsion will be used and take those concentrations to calculate the volume of each macronutrient. Finally, you take the volume of each macronutrient to calculate the minimum total volume. Only when you have completed all seven steps will you be ready to write a prescription. The easiest way to determine the demand for fluid, energy, and protein is to use a simple weight-based calculation. For fluid and energy, you should use milliliters per kilogram per day and calories per kilogram per day, respectively. For protein, you should use grams per kilogram per day. Carbohydrate needs are different and can be guided with the glucose infusion rate in mind. As a general rule, you want to provide less than 5 mg per kilogram per minute. This is because exceeding that value increases risk for complications like hyperglycemia and liver dysfunction. So, you choose a rate below 5 and solve for grams by using the formula shown. A rate of 3 mg per kilogram per minute is a good place to start. Once you have the number of grams needed, Finding calories from protein is easy. It is the same as calculating calories from food, 4 calories per gram. Since the carbohydrate provided is the hydrated form of dextrose, it only provides 3.4 calories per gram. As soon as you have the calories from protein and carbohydrate, you can solve for fat with subtraction. Calories from fat can then be turned into grams by dividing by 10 since the emulsifying agents add to the usual energy load of 9 calories per gram. This is where you select the stock solutions and fat emulsion from the various choices and calculate the volume of each macronutrient. To do this, it is best to set up a proportion. The concentration of the solutions gives you the grams per 100 milliliter. For example, a 10% amino acid solution contains 10 grams of protein per 100 milliliters. Cross multiplication and division allows you to see how much of that solution is needed to satisfy the amount of grams you want to provide. A different way to get the volume of fat is to know the amount of calories per milliliter of each available emulsion. Then you take the calories you need from fat and divide it by calories provided per milliliter, 1.1, 2, or 3. Coming to an end, you calculate the minimum total volume, which is the lowest volume you can use to fit the ingredients. It must always take into account the 100 to 200 milliliters provided by additives like electrolytes, vitamins, and trace minerals. You can calculate how much sterile water should be added by taking the total desired volume and subtracting the minimum total volume. Finally, you are ready to write a prescription. The prescription should always identify the patient and the weight used to do the calculations. The infusion site, the total volume, and the rate in milliliters per hour should be documented as well. Last but not least, you list the ingredients. Macronutrients should always be written in grams per day to avoid confusion or error if the percent stock solution or fat emulsion changes. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.